What I want to demonstrate in this lesson is maybe the most important thing about this particular Shader Forge course, and that's the concept of turning this entire node network into a simple singular node for easy manipulation. And this is through the use of node groups. So if we look back at our node network, we can think about some areas that would be really nice for manipulating this shader further. Let's say we don't want it to be gold, but we want it to be silver or copper. We can easily plug that color in right here to the glossy BSDF. Also, if we want to change the rust color for some reason, or if we want to make the rust spots bigger, but keep the rest of the shader the same. Right now to do that, we have to come in here and figure out which of these nodes controls each of those individual components. And so especially if we want to reuse this shader later or pass it along to someone else to use, node groups will make this infinitely more intuitive. And so uh, the way we'll do this is select every node except the material output and then hit control G, which will transport us to sort of the edit mode of node groups. So if you look in the background, you can see our original material output node and then the actual node group node. And so overlaid on top, we have all of the nodes that are inside the group. We also have a group input node and a group output node. And so the first uh, thing that I mentioned changing would be the color of the metal. And so I can do that by grabbing this color socket and dragging it over to the group input. That's going to create a color input socket for the node group. Now let's uh, drag this panel a little bit wider and we can rename this to be metal color. And then if we hit tab, we go back to the node group by itself and we have the ability to change the color there. And so what about the rust color? We'll do the same thing and we'll drag that right below it, rename the node rust color. And so color swatches are very easy to add in a node group, but what if we wanna change the rust scale, right? So if we look at our shader being rendered, remember we have little specks of rust, as you can see here. When I change this scale way down, let's say to like 10, our rust becomes much bigger, the spots become much bigger, but everything else stays the same. This would be a nice parameter to have for the node group. So let's uh, undo that to go back to 75, our original value. And the way I can turn this into a manipulatable parameter is uh, I like to use a converter math node. A principle that I adhere to whenever I'm creating node groups is to make it clear that the default shader is the default. And so uh, with the values, that's usually like a value of zero if I want something turned off or a value of one. And then from there we can go down or up. But if I drag this scale value of 75 into the parameter that we'll call rust scale, there's no real point of reference for what that 75 means. And so this is why I like to use a math node, change the operation to multiply, value one is one, and we're multiplying that by the default scale that I set. So I'm going to copy that 75, paste it in the bottom value. And now this can go into the scale and our value of one can go over into our group node or rather our group input. And I'll name that value rust scale. So now if I tab out to look at the node group, it should be more intuitive that a value of one is what I intended as the creator of this shader to be um, the default scale and I can go up or down from there. It also makes it easier to reset the shader when I only have to worry about values of one or zero. And uh, let's dive back in for some other parameters like a bump strength value. This one's very simple. Just go over to our bump node and drag the strength socket over to the group input. However, this is another weird value of 0.05 that doesn't provide any reference to the user. And so again, I'm going to be using a math node. I'll simply duplicate this multiply using shift D and value of one. We'll copy the strength value into the bottom socket and then plug the math node into the strength and the uh, upper value of the multiply into our group input, rename it to be bump strength. And then uh, in addition to the scale value of only the rust spots, let's also make a scale value for all of our textures. And so um, all of the scale values are different. Like here we have a scale of five, here a scale of 75, and then this Veronoi is a scale of 30. But I wanna control them with the same parameter. 
So this is also where the math node comes in handy. So I can duplicate this around and simply copy the scale values into the bottom socket and then uh, drag this into the scale value of the noise texture value one into our group input. Let's rename this bump scale. And then um, I'm gonna duplicate this again to put in front of our previous multiply. Or rather, let's see, I'll just drag this one over to the side and uh, let's see, I want to make this one the overall scale. So we'll uh, unplug the value one socket and plug that instead into the bump scale. Okay, so the same parameter is now controlling both of these math nodes. But if I duplicate this now, then the incoming connection is from this first multiply. And so the bottom value, let's make that one and drag that into the rest scale. That way we can accurately control both types individually as well as relatively. And so uh, continuing on, I'm going to multiply, or I mean duplicate this multiply node for our other scale textures, like the Veronoi. I need a value of 30, we'll copy that, and then plug it in. Again, going to the bump scale, using the same parameter to manipulate all of our scale values. And then shift control duplicate to maintain the incoming uh, bump scale connection. And this time I need a value of 20. There we go, I think that that's all of the scale values. Yes, okay, so let's test that. Tabbing back into the node group view for bump scale. Let's see, I'll first increase the bump strength so that we can see a more prominent effect. Let's go to like five. So clearly that's much more bumpy. And the bump scale, let's go down to like 0.2. Everything should get much bigger, which uh, just gives us a very different result. So maybe that would be useful to someone's particular type of metal, or we can go up to let's say two. And now it's a much more fine pattern. Almost looks like aluminum foil or gold foil for like something in space like satellites. And uh, so those are working great. We'll take the strength back down to one, a bump scale to one as well. And also the rust scale, we'll take that down to one. Now, uh, the more that I look at this, I feel like I messed something up. It doesn't look exactly how it did in the beginning, I, I think. So let's, uh, let's take a closer look in here and see if I changed any uh, values. Let's see, that's one in 30, so that's correct. What was this one? That's 20, so that's correct. And so this should be 75 times one, which should match this, that seems correct. And then what is this value? Yeah, that's correct. Hmm, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it is the same. It just, uh, for some reason, felt a little bit different. I guess not, we'll continue on. And uh, the last setting that I wanna show you is a parameter for adjusting between this hammered texture and the raw texture. And so we combined those with this mix node here. And so I can simply drag the factor over to the group input. But the default setting here was like 0.1 or something. If we click on that value, yeah, 0.11. And so just to be more clean, I'm gonna go 0.1 instead of 0.11 as the default value. And the reason I'm not making this one or zero is because I'm going to name this raw slash hammered, which means that as a setting, the further I go to the left, the closer it will be to raw, and the further I go right, the closer it will be to hammered. And so when I tab back to the node group, you can see that it's a slider. And so it's fairly intuitive, go left for raw and go right for hammered. So if we go all the way up to one, we should get a pure hammered look and we're not. Oh, wait a minute. I think I see what's wrong now. Why it doesn't look the same. If we tab back in, I must have inadvertently, yeah, changed this Veronoi texture to cells instead of intensity. Yeah, I don't know how I managed to do that. But anyway, we want intensity, definitely not cells. So now if we tab back uh, with this raw hammered parameter up to one, we get a pure hammered look. And then if we go down to zero, we get a pure raw look. And then of course we can go anywhere in between. So um, if I set, uh, right click on it and go to reset to default value, for some reason that doesn't go to uh, 0.1, which is what we set 
um, right here. I'm not sure why it does that, but the intention here is for the user to pick, you know, whatever value they want within the zero to one range. I think a mixture looks the best. So anyway, that is a basic overview of how we can create a node group, taking the complex node network from our original shader and then consolidating it into a much more simple to use single node. And so with this, we can simply change this to a silver metal instead, or maybe a copper. We can make it more or less bumpy. We can change the scale, basically still change all of the important elements of the material while basically hiding all of the uh, mechanisms and math nodes and mixtures that give us this final result. However, there is some responsibility as the creator of this node group uh, because we have the ability to add whatever parameters we want, as many as we want or as few as we want. Generally, the node group uh, is best if it's simple and only lets the user change the most important settings. But um, the danger is leaving too many settings out. Like, for example, we have no control currently over the reflections of the metal. We can't make them more dull or more clear. It's just this is what you get. And so it's probably wise for us to continue adding at least a roughness parameter. Let's see how we can do that. Um, this uh, add node is being plugged into the roughness. And so if I add a multiply node, shift D duplicating it and add it after the add node, then what I can do is change the value to one as the default. And let's plug this in to the group input. We'll call this roughness, or maybe give it a little more context, metal roughness. And I think it could make more sense above the rust color, because um, up here we have metal color, metal roughness, those should be grouped together. Then we have rust and rust scale, rust color and rust scale. And then finally the bump parameter. So I'm kind of grouping them intentionally because they're related to one another. And so now if we tab out and look at that metal roughness value, if I take this down, let's say to 0.2, things get more clear. If I take this up, let's say to three, I'm making things more rough by multiplying all of those texture and mixture nodes together keeps the effect. So you can see that all of the time we spent adding some patchiness and splotches, that's still there but the effect is intensifying as we go up. And so honestly, a problem with this is you see that our splotchiness gets very, very apparent. And so as we increase the number uh, for multiplication, the contrast between the splotchiness is going to increase as well. And so this might be desired. Personally, I want to raise it up and lower it as if it's on like a shelf or like an elevator. So everything goes up at the same rate. And so instead of multiplication, I would do that with addition. So let's see if we can make sense of that. We'll change the operation to add. And so when I multiply the incoming connection by a value of one, that uh, turns it basically into a diffuse shader. And so uh, in order to make this most intuitive, I do want the input value to be one, as in what the user sees here, the default value, I want that to be one. And so let's think how we can turn one into a value that would affect this correctly. Basically, what I want in here is a value of zero. And so if we want an input of one, but we want it to affect this node at a value of zero, I simply need to duplicate this math node, change the operation to subtract, and make both values one. Okay, so now I don't want um, this plugged into the noodle. I'm just trying to avoid splicing it in there. So now when we plug the value up to our addition node and this top socket of one over into our group input, sorry, the nodes are getting real small as we get spaced out. And where did I put this? metal roughness right there. So now we've got a value of one minus one being zero. And so if I now change this to like 0.5, we're taking everything down like an elevator to be shinier across the board. And if I go up now, let's see, what's a value of two? So that takes it all the way up. And now we've sort of experienced the extremes of our value. So what about 1.2? 
There we go. So it's a sensitive setting, but I think it's maybe more intuitive than the multiplication because um, the effect of our textures is maintained relatively. And so this is kind of my preference. Again, as the creator of a node group, you have some responsibility in making this as intuitive and flexible and simple as possible. So however you go about that is largely up to you in figuring that out. But um, I prefer this addition method so that the splotchiness doesn't become um, overpowered. And then easily resettable to a value of one. This was our original shader. If we uh, change the bump strength back to one and then our color, let's go back to a yellow to give us that gold. Unfortunately, I don't think we can reset to a default. Yeah. So I would love for that to be changed. I'm not sure what default that's resetting to if it's not the one I set for the node group. Anyway, I'm going to finish the lesson there. Hopefully now you have a much better idea of how to set up a node group, um, except for renaming it to something intuitive, like uh, the name, let's call it Hammered Metal. And then I'm just gonna copy that to the label. And then the node group, I usually like to do Hammered Metal keep the name spaceless underscore ng for node group. And that is how I officially finish off a custom node group.